What's happening, Andy here. I'm joined today by Ed Jansen, Vice President at Canon Solutions America. How are you today, Ed? Fantastic, Andy. Great to be here. Thank you Great very much. Great to see you. Great to see you. So you are in sunny Florida today, uh, down in uh, the Miami area, I'm guessing? Uh, Boca Raton, yeah, a little bit north of Miami. So I've been down there several times, not in the last year or two for some strange reason, but uh, you know we've had many analyst days down at that facility, a wonderful facility. Uh, I missed that show. I can't wait until we're able to do that conference again. But uh, we haven't spoken to you guys in a while. Specifically, we haven't chatted with Canon Solutions, and I thought it would be a good time to catch up, find out what's happening uh, with, with, with you, with Canon Solutions, and just with Inkjet in general. So um, first off, let's, uh, let's do a little background on you. I know um, it's not quite your first day at Canon. I, I'd spent a little time on, your, <laughs> on your, uh, your LinkedIn. So why don't you fill us in? How'd you get to where you are today? All right. Well, it's been a bit of a journey. Absolutely, Andy. So I've been around for uh, coming up on 32 years. And uh, I, I started in the organization in the, the continuous feed toner side of the business, uh, the Siemens OSE side of the business, and uh, worked very much on the customer facing side, uh, the, the service and engineering side of the business, and came down to Boca Raton around 1994 and transitioned over to the software and solutions business. And I was in uh, in that business for I guess almost almost 20 years, and it was a phenomenal business. Uh, we were able to, over the years, uh, really evolve the business. It was, it was a black and white toner business, and it evolved into a color business. I had the responsibility for the software sales team. Uh, the integration team had a software development team, project managers, and it really was, became very much customer-facing and solution-driven activity. So how was it? We worked with customers. We understood their environments. And we drove a solution into their environment that served their needs the best. Uh, and that was, that was status quo for quite some time. And it just kept, kept evolving. And Inkjet just really just changed the world for us, uh, changed the manufacturing process, uh, really going to more streamlined white paper type approaches to things. Uh, and then we all woke up one day and we were wearing masks. And, uh, and I, was, I was really just blessed with an opportunity to, to uh, lead the marketing team. It was probably not on my list. Uh, really didn't see it coming, to be very frank. Uh, but what it did do is it allowed me to now get closer, not just from a workflow perspective, uh, but from a, a whole product and solution perspective and a future direction and strategy uh, type approach. So, so it's been a phenomenal ride for me. I just can't believe that I've had this opportunity over the last 30 years. And at the same time, allowed to lever leverage all of the information uh, and, and skills that I've acquired over the years and, and use them for our customers. So your, your background, your history is, uh, it's, it's that, that big iron side. I, I did have the, uh, the privilege of, of, of touring the, the, uh, the Venlo and then the Poing uh, locations from, from Ose, Siemens, and, and uh, just a different, different level, different animal than, than we were used to seeing from some of the, you know, some of the uh, Japanese uh, manufacturers and, and even some of the American manufacturers, just totally another level. Um, it wasn't all inkjet, but it was really going in that direction. I think you could really feel it coming back then. And, and so you've had quite a ride from that. And, and so, you know, different name Canon takes over. It was sort of, I think one of, uh, you know, one of the better um, mergers, let's call it, uh, that we've seen. It was just two companies that complemented each other so well. And then over the last few years, you, you finally retired the Yosei name. That, that name held on for a long time. That had a lot of cachet. I actually sold it when I was with Icon a little bit. Um, I tried to. It was a that was a big animal for a geographic rep for me, like me. But but just the the, the reputation for those products was all about reliability, right? And 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 so um, I like to talk about Inkjet today. You know, Inkjet is uh, is is really just taking over uh, the market from from those uh, plate presses that I used to see when I'd be knocking on doors back in the day and, and trying to talk uh, more, more likely xerography than anything, because that's what my company sold. Uh, but let, let's talk about the market and, and maybe how you, you've seen a change over the last five years, 10 years or so, uh, where it's going, the digital transformation, and uh, you know, how Inkjet and, and Canon plays into that. Okay. Well, like you said, Inkjet has, has had kind of a, uh, I would say, a, a, a storied past uh, inkjet came out and initially a lot of people weren't believers in what inkjet technology could do um, some some people considered it just good enough uh, maybe for transactional type communications and things that didn't require high levels of quality uh, and that that occurred through uh, the early 2000s when we, we saw that as a company and what we saw our, our competitors doing uh, but really that began to evolve over time and and we took 
inkjet and we began to move into things like like book production uh, and the quality levels and the expectation and the density that people would expect uh, and bring all the advantages of inkjet it's more reliable uh, the consistency of output it really doesn't change over time as some of the the ep uh, toner based products do uh, and then in addition to that you can really remove a lot of, of manufacturing steps and simplify things get a uh, more affordable operator uh, or or simplify the operations uh, and, and all those advantages allowed it to get a really strong foothold. Uh, and then it, as, as time passed, the head technology, the ink technology, the interaction with media and paper, all of those things came together. And, and we, you know, we refer to it as crossing the chasm. We were sitting on one side of this, this chasm, looking at all these pages on the other side. It was tremendous amounts of high quality color uh, and we just couldn't get there with the initial product. Uh, and that has really changed in the last, uh, really the last couple of years. And our latest generation of products, uh, the Barry Print IX and the ProStream, have now crossed over at 1200 DPI, high quality color, uh, really looking at high value, uh, direct mail, uh, very personalized, uh, but at the same time, even moving into areas like photo specialty, which we, we frankly, we didn't think we could get there 10 years ago. It was, it was a stretch. Uh, and it's really amazing where the technology has gone. It, it is, it is um, just to, to watch how it's unfolded over the last several years. Is, is, and, and not only that, but the acceptance at that level, right? I mean, you've got this, this community of, of um, you know, I would say commercial printers who are, are, you know, they make their living off of those, those machines, but once they buy it, they don't want to change it. They don't want to invest in something new. Uh, yet, you know, every now and then something comes along and you've really got to, You've really got to, um, you know, evolve with it. And, and, and when there's something that's just that much better, that much faster, you know, when you can take days out of a process, right? I mean, that's just, um, you're putting money in people's pockets. You're, you're increasing turnarounds. You're helping, uh, helping them do things they've never been able to do before, right? So um, maybe let's talk about some of the applications that, uh, that, that have, have come down the pike in the last couple of years that are... Um, just sort of mind blowing to you. Where, you know, what, what are some of the things you think that, you, that you've seen that have just been like big wows for Ed? Well, one of the big wows is, is a combination when you look at my old role too on the software side, the hardest part was to, to identify preference management and understanding what consumers uh, and the end user really wanted. And could you marry that to message that message together in a campaign and deliver it in a digital form, in a printed form. The value is how you tie all of these technologies together to deliver messaging that comes at just the right time, highly personalized, very, you know, it's gotta be relevant to, uh, to what they're looking for and, and what their needs and desires are. And, and preference management and, and content management really wasn't there maybe five years ago. The data was hard to get to. Uh, so now we have the ability to get to the data to drive that, that activity and with it, uh, comes this high quality output that's 100% variable uh, that now can be on all different types of substrates and it can be postcards, it can be complex uh, pieces that are, that are die cut uh, that look very, very different from what we saw a few years back. Uh, that's, my, that's my favorite application. Uh, but the other big thing is, is the transition of long run to short run. So where people used to run very long, consistent applications, and you could run them maybe on an offset press, conventional technology, um, or, or even some, we always ran it on toner. And now you move that into inkjet because those runs are shorter and shorter, that variability is there. Uh, but, but the application of books, uh, we've seen books just go through the roof from a digital perspective, and especially during the pandemic. And, and that, we, we manufacture more books, uh, and it's more about the solution. Can you identify the books? Can you group the books together in, uh, in, into like content, like media, like size, like finishing? And if you can do all of those things, you can actually create a book of one. Somebody could order one book and have it within a day or two uh, and do it at a, a reliable and also a cost-effective way. And that, I mean, you couldn't get there 10 years ago and we do it every day now. So, I mean, the applications for that are great to me because it allows, obviously for the customization, but it also allows for, you know, people who say, I want to write a book, I want to be an author. And now, you know, I have a buddy who's done that and, and maybe he sold- I'm, I'm working on my, mine, Andy. Well, 20 or 30 books, right? I mean, you're not going to get a publishing deal for that, but he's got a book on his shelf with his name on it that he wrote and he sent them out to people and people read them. I mean, it's, it gives everybody the ability to be an author it can get picked up and then you wind up, you know, maybe with a publishing deal someday. But at the very least, 
if you go through all that effort, you know, back in the day, you would do that and get shut down from publishers. And now you really can make a book if you want to go through it that far. I mean, and it doesn't take that much to do it. You just have to find a print shop willing to do it. And, and, and because of this print on demand and this ability to one off, um, I think that makes it, you know, obviously much more realistic for somebody to do. I have to say, uh, I, I can't remember the products that they were. I think they were a uh, wide format, but when I was down there last, you guys, one of the things I thought that was so cool was you had started layering ink and, and, and I saw it at Canon Expo, actually, the last one, which was, my gosh, I can't remember when that was. Was it 15, 16? I don't even remember now. Uh, but several years ago, you had Canon Expo and they had, uh, it was sort of future product. And they had all this stuff they made with, with layers. It, it, it looked like 3D, but it wasn't. That was, that was the wide format group. And they did it where they could replicate oil paintings and, and the buildup of an oil painting. And so you'd have not only the look, but the feel and texture of oil painting. So, yeah. It's so cool. So, you know, when you're a, a top three, top five patent holder globally, as, as Canon mm -hmm. is every single year, that's one of my favorite press releases and you do it every year. And one of the things I love is even in down years, I mean, let's be realistic. Canon has up years and down years, just like everybody else. But even in down years, that R&D always holds. You just never cut there. And we've seen from, you know, many other companies out there that that's one of the first things they do, knee-jerk reaction. And it, personally, I think that's a, it's a bad cycle, right? You, you know, your sales weren't good, so you cut the research, which down the road is going to impact your sales because now you're not going to be as competitive. And, you know, whether you had good years or bad years, Canon is that slide comes up every single year. Number three, number five, number three. You're always in the in the top. I think it's number top three every year, but I, I could be wrong. I know it's top almost three. every year. Almost yeah. every year. For, and it's globally for thirty some odd years. It's it's globally. So um, you know, kudos to, to you guys kind of keeping that ball moving forward like that. Um, looking looking ahead, you know, uh, let, let's talk about what's Canon been doing over the last couple of months. I, I know you mentioned there was a, sh a recent show that you did. I want to talk about how did that go. Uh, and then there's something coming up, you know, your, your big uh, think uh, conference is coming up as you do every year. Last year it had to be 100% virtual now, um, hopefully not. So uh, what was the one you just recently did? Uh, we did a thing called uh, Inkjet Summit was, was uh, a big event that, that was very focused on the entire industry and people coming in. And, and it was, you know, it was, it was done in just the right, right approach. It was, it, was, it was a hybrid event that was also an in-person event. And with that, it allowed people to that had a preference to stay home but still get exposed to the content. Uh, that that activity was allowed to happen. Uh, more importantly, what we really got an understanding of was 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 what was happening uh, in in the business with our customers and a lot of people that weren't our customers. And and to hear what their challenges were, that's a big thing here at Canon. Uh, I've been here, like as you said, quite a quite a good deal of years. And one of the most important things that we do is uh, we have customer councils, we have customer uh, interaction, uh, whether it's on a product basis or, or even our digital print advisory council. And we constantly poll and listen to customers. And I think it's a differentiator for us. We don't build products and hope that they're gonna fit in the market. Uh, we listen to people, we find out what their business requirements are uh, and we build the products that then fit within those requirements. And we constantly talk, we constantly test, we constantly get feedback. Uh, and these events are so important. So at Inkjet Summit, we got to see a lot of our, our current customers again after, after a lot of time apart. Uh, and at the same time, we came back and uh, got to see a lot of new, new faces. And a lot of people are in that, that uh, I'd call it that not high production area. They're down in that middle tier, and they're trying to figure out how to leverage Inkjet. Uh, Inkjet definitely has uh, some tre tremendous advantage, advantages around productivity, uh, and machine availability when you compare it to uh, some of the other technologies, uh, the total cost of ownership, uh, the cost of a piece, really you can drive down tremendously. Uh, so people are trying to make that, that, that step forward and they're in a different group. And that's the fun part uh, about spending time with customers because we, we get the chance to, to really dig into how do we help. Uh, and it's good to see everybody back face to face again. Yeah, yeah. Um... And then the next one coming up, that's Think, right? So that, that's, uh, when is that one coming? I think it's pretty soon, actually. Think is coming, uh, yeah, October 12th, uh, yeah. the week of October 12th, and uh, down here in Boca Raton. And uh, we just, once again, we cannot wait. Uh, the, the big focus this year, uh, and, and just to, to, to put it on the table, right? There, there's activity, we wanna make sure that we're very cautious in how we approach things. So we once again have a hybrid event. Last year, uh, we had to really shift and, and figure out uh, in the middle of the year how we were going to deliver all of the Think content 
and we did a hundred percent online experience. I think we did a phenomenal job. Uh, we actually learned that because we had so many recorded sessions, we had all this great content for our customers to then view uh, throughout the year and revisit. We learned a lot from that. And so now this year it will be a face-to-face, -face, but also a hybrid event so that we'll do the same exact thing. We'll capture all of this content, all the information. Uh, we can reuse it throughout the year. People can, can go back. Uh, and, and at the same time, we're going to be very cautious. So we've, we've scaled the size of the event. Uh, we broke it apart into two, two separate groups. So we have uh, less density uh, and, and we've also focused the topics a little bit differently this year. Uh, we're, we're in a pandemic. Some of us, we thought we were coming out of a pandemic, but we, it appears we may still be in. Uh, but the big discussions now are what do you need to do for your business? What, what are the changes that are occurring? How do you gain the efficiencies that you need? What is the next big step on the far side of the pandemic? And, and so we've, we've really modified the content to be content that will feed the next two and a half years. What's gonna happen as we exit? How do you grow your business in the most effective way? Uh, and that's, that's why I'm so excited about it. because It's a little bit of shift again uh, from, from what we've done in prior years. And that's also important to keep it, keep it fresh and really have a, a great experience for everybody. You know, I, I, I hate the thought of going to a hybrid um, meeting, but you know, when you can't get to that meeting and sometimes I have a conflict, sometimes you know, everybody's got a conflict. You just can't, even if it wasn't a safety or health issue, um, or maybe you're in Canada and the border's not quite open yet, you know, the ability to just be able to go see that without having to, to go. I mean, I'd, I'd always prefer to be live, but sometimes time just doesn't allow you to do that. And, you know, I wonder going forward once, you know, hopefully this is really behind us, if you guys will continue to do uh, the hybrid meetings just to, you know, help you cat, help you get in front of that, that maybe 25% of the people who, who tuned in that, you know, weren't going to be able to physically make it or, um, to your point, uh, the interesting thing to me is is, is really the, the data you're capturing. You know, you get to see what people are, are, are watching, what people are going back to over and over again. Um, you probably have the ability to see who's looking at it too, which is just, you know, invaluable. Data is is everything, right? As you know, and, and obviously in that uh, role, uh, you guys are very data driven. And, and to be able to, you know, look at the data and what's going on rather than how many people were in your session today, did they look interested, right? I mean, that's, you know, that's one gauge, but to really look at metrics that show you specifically how long they were on that video, how far in did they get, at what point did they turn it off? Because you may find, you know, there are some things that we've been spending a lot of time and effort and energy, uh, you know, trying to present to these customers and they don't care. So let's shift to the things they do gravitate towards. Let's invest in those areas. So um, just, a, I like the hybrid approach quite a bit, although again, my preference is to, is to be live. Uh, Moving forward, you know, where, where do you see, obviously, um, the, the resellers, the print um, the salespeople are making, a, you know, probably uh, have come up with some, some pretty clever uh, uh, things to be printed, COVID related, right? You've got the, a, a lot of signage that came out of this, a lot of little printouts on the ground and separators that nobody seems to, to use anymore, but they're all out there. Um, there has been so much printing needed and, and, and print shops, to my knowledge, in, in, in all the states have been... Um, have been, uh, uh, you know, um, not required, but uh, listed as, um, um, what's the word I'm searching for? They're, they're essential. Kind of, essential. Thank you. My goodness, I probably should write that down. But essential <laughs> services, right? I mean, you wouldn't think a, a print shop is an essential service, but the signage was so key for the last 18, 24 months of what we've been doing, um, just trying to keep people informed. You know, what, what kind of opportunities do you see right now and, and perhaps going forward, um, just because of our situation that may not have been here two years ago. Uh, you, you touch on some, some things that are really, uh, they were surprises for us because we had, we had equipment that was very focused on maybe one segment of the market or some activity. And the next thing you knew, you were doing uh, short run menu print, print runs. Oh yeah. Uh, and because no one could have a, a, some, a, a, a plastic menu any longer, they needed a disposable menu, for example all of the signage that occurred, all of the, the notices that occurred. Uh, we continue to see that as just a tremendous opportunity. And, and some of our technology lends itself very well to, to, to small sizes and also very large size dimensions. Uh, so that allows the flexibility for people to produce any type of a product, a, a poster, um, postcards, any type of, the, the communication, I think really changed throughout the pandemic uh, because of the direct need of the market. And the market drives what 
what we are creating, not vice versa. So we saw that happen every single day. And, and people came to us constantly and said, do you think you can do this? Do you think this is something we could get into as a business? Uh, and and we, we, we really rose to the occasion in, in doing that. Uh, the, the really good thing that we've noticed is print volumes are pretty much back to where they were pre-pandemic right now. But the print has changed, going back to your point. Uh, there's, there's more black uh, and white because you see this type of things like menus and uh, more notices and communications. Uh, so we haven't seen the same level of color and color content, uh, but we've seen the volumes return, which was really, really important uh, for the industry. Uh, so it's, so it's, uh, it's been an interesting time as we've gone through the last 18 months. Yeah, well, books you mentioned on uh, earlier, uh, a, a big kind of explosion during the pandemic. People were stuck home, they were reading more. Um, you know, it's funny because we all thought 10 years ago books were going to go away with Kindles and whatever, but I think there's still something about physically holding a book and, and you know, when you finish it, putting it on your bookshelf, it's almost a trophy, right? You've, you've accomplished something and, and you don't get that with the Kindle. The Kindle's convenient, but it's little and it's, I don't know, it's a little harder on the eyes. Something about just that physical nature and, and uh, you know, being able to, to um, do the smaller runs like we, we, we spoke of earlier. It's just so many, so many advantages to it. Uh, what 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 else uh, what what else is coming going down the pike? You've got you've got think uh, any products any big launches or, or maybe you can't talk specifics about it. But uh, time frame when should we sort of keep our eyes open for Canon solutions for for some? Well time? well you know we had an exciting eighteen months. We introduced three products over the last eighteen months. So the ProStream eighteen hundred, uh, the Fireprint IX, and the ColorStream eight thousand, which is the you know the the next generation of our our most successful web feed. WebFed, uh, uh, Inkjet Press. But you made a great point earlier. Canon is constantly developing and investing. Uh, it's really interesting if you go out to the Canon website uh, and you look at the global strategy, uh, print is identified as one of the core technologies that Canon will continue to invest in. And it's very clearly defined. Uh, and also we leverage that technology in different ways. So we may have been highly successful with inkjet technology in the, maybe the, the mid and high tier product line in production, uh, but those same technologies can now be leveraged uh, throughout office technology. Uh, and the same technologies can also be leveraged as we shift into uh, what we'll consider more industrial print and, and uh, folding cartons and, and other types of, of print technology that just are huge markets for Canon. So, the beautiful thing, going back to the patents, going back to the, the tremendous amount of investment, uh, that's all very methodical in how we, we approach the next four years and how we continue to introduce products. So we can't open up uh, and, and share much more than that, but there's a lot to come. I, I just keep telling people we're just getting started. It's, it's a beautiful time. Well, it's always, a, it's always a pleasure to come into those events. I miss them. I, I know sooner or later we will get to start doing them again. And I can't wait to get down to Boca and, and you know, see some of those uh, products that you launched in action for real. Um, that's always one of the, you know, the real treats of that trip is you just, you put us in front of those things and you run the heck out of them and you show us everything that you can do off of them. And it just blows people's minds sometimes. Um, you know, some of it's just print, right? And, and, and to me, that's exciting. But some of it's like that, uh, those oil painting things. You just see something that you just don't expect come out of your printers and, and you do it all the time. So kudos to, you know, you guys for, you know, just always moving forward. And, and, and again, that research is, um, research and development, I think is, is just one of the things that makes you guys unique. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time on your schedule today to, to chat with me and, uh, you know, one, any last shout outs, any last final messages to anybody? Well, uh, Andy, just one other thing, when you do come down here, we're going to have a big surprise for you because we, we unveiled in the middle of a pandemic, a beautiful new customer innovation center. Really? Uh, it is just a phenomenal facility and we can host uh, not only our own events and customer visits, we can test technology and, and test partner technology, uh, but we're even hosting some of our, our customers for some of the industry events. Uh, and it's, it's an ideal facility for that type of activity. It really replicates what our customers' environments look like. Uh, and it's, it's really placed us in a tremendous position uh, for the next 10 years. And so we can't wait to show that to you. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. That sounds exciting. Ed, this has been an absolute pleasure. I really appreciate you, uh, you chatting with me today. Say hi to everybody down there in Boca. I miss them all. And I look forward to seeing you guys sooner than later. We look forward to it too. Thank you, Andy. Thanks so much, Ed. Take care. Bye-bye.